Hello, this is Ron Campbell calling at an appointed hour. Hi, how are you doing, Ron? I'm great. Who am I speaking with? Uh, this is Jeremy Shirley. Jeremy? Yeah. Oh, hi, Jeremy. Hi. Um, how was your radio interview? Oh, uh, went fine. Uh, normal. All right. Um, I want to say uh, you've been in work for 50 years, and it's a, that's an amazing accomplishment. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, it wasn't that hard, you know, to uh, spend 50 years making cartoons. It's a fun job, you know, and uh, you just have to live long enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, in, that, in, in, the, in the course of that, uh, I guess I did a lot of things that uh, was, uh, a lot of fun memories for people, uh, among which uh, were Scooby-Doo and uh, the Flintstones and Jetsons, and, and included some music fans, uh, the Beatles. I directed the, uh, about half the episodes of the Beatles TV cartoon show from the early 60s and later on animated uh, some 12 minutes of the Yellow Submarine, the feature film. I, I wanted to ask, um, you know, um, whenever you, um, you create artwork, you have to identify with it. Um, how did you identify with Scooby-Doo? Well, that was easy. You know, everybody identifies with Scooby-Doo. Everybody remembers being a child, being hardly able to talk, you know. And... Um, Everybody loves a dog, you know, <laughs> a big, big dog who was a real scaredy cat, you know. So that that was fun, you know. Um, uh, what what was it wor like working with Hanna Barbera? Uh, well, I worked for Bill Hanna the first year I came to the United States, and um, I grew to uh, admire him very much. Uh, uh, Jeremy Burr was a very talented man, also. And after that, um, I, uh, I subcontracted for them. I freelanced for them. I opened an animation studio across the road from them, very large studio. And uh, I was producing a show called The Big Blue Marble, uh, which was my own show. And during that period, and before and afterwards, uh, Bill Hanna used to, when he got a bit uh, too busy with uh, subcontract shows to me. And uh, after that, I spent quite a few years doing storyboards and script writing for the studio. So, um, uh, I, I, as I say, I greatly admired Bill Hanna, particularly. I worked with him mostly. Oh, you, you have delivered some class classic pieces over the years. Yeah. Yeah, when you look back, you don't. when you're doing it, of course, you don't think of it that way. Uh, even when I was doing the Beatles TV show, I wasn't... Uh, if somebody had have told me that 50 years later I would be speaking to uh, Jeremy uh, in Little Rock about about the cartoons that I was working on at that time, I would have said, what, are you crazy 50 years from now? Oh, no. Really? <laughs> I wouldn't have believed it. But here I am. Um, I wanted to ask, um, you actually got your citizenship in the early 70s. What was that like? Well, um, like most people who get their citizenship, um, I was very proud of it. Um, uh, you know, I didn't suffer too much culture shock coming from Australia to America. Um, it's, it's, uh, if you were in Australia, you would think of yourself as being in America anyway. Uh, there are differences, you know, a little bit differences in the cuisine, a little... Some of, the, some of the cultural things are different, but um, it was a very easy transition. And, um, and, and as I say, a proud thing, America is a great and mighty nation, and Australia is a small backwater almost, but still it's, uh, it's a terrific, one of, one of the good countries. So, I hope to visit it someday. Yeah, good, you should. Everybody, every, every American would enjoy their time in Australia. Do you know uh, which pieces you're going to bring with you? Or are you going to have a selection to choose from? Oh, yeah. We ha I'll have about 50 paintings. And they will be framed and up on the wall. And we'll sell, we'll sell others um, uh, unframed. Uh, and, and it's a fun show to go to and watch. You don't have to buy anything. But if you do, um, the prices range from $290 or so to... 
I don't know, nine thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars, somewhere in there. But mostly they're under a thousand dollars. And uh, as I say, you don't have to buy anything. Uh, and and if you're very little and very cute, I'll do a drawing of Scooby Doo for you. Oh, that, oh that's good. <laughs> You've got to be little and cute, though. <laughs> I'm way past that. <laughs> uh, uh, what do you think on the influence of your Yellow Submarine that Hot Wheels just came out with a new line of them for kids and adults? Hot Wheels? Yeah, Hot did Wheels has really? the yeah Hot Wheels has their own Yellow Submarine yeah, car. Did they really? Yeah, I remember doing a TV show for Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels actually. Um, uh, so so what was your question? I, I wanted to ask, Adam, what, what do you think about Hot Wheels releasing a yellow submarine car? Oh, I think that's wonderful. Why not? Yeah. I saw, Why not, indeed? Our next question. Oh, I understand you were in New York in the middle of the night whenever you got a phone call in 1965? Uh, yes, yes. Um, I was in Sydney, and I got a phone call in the middle of the night from New York. And um, uh, it was Al Brodax. I had um, already um, produced some episodes for uh, for King Features, um, Crazy Cat, Beetle Bailey, um, uh, Popeye. And Al Brodax was on the phone. And he said, Ron, we've just sold a new TV show for next season. We'd like you to be able to direct the, sh the episodes we're going to produce in Australia. Would you be interested in doing that? And I said, absolutely, Al. That's wonderful news. I'm glad you've got a new show. What is the show? And he said, it's the Beatles. I thought for a minute, Al, insects make terrible shows. <laughs> terrible characters for, for kids' shows. And I, I was imagining little beat, little Volkswagens running around or, or little insects. And you know, I didn't I didn't connect it at all with the actual rock and roll show. You know, <laughs> it was the beginning of the Beatles' career, and I wasn't taking all that much notice of um, of music uh, at the time. I was still trying to learn how to make cartoon films. If you you can keep in touch with where I'm doing shows by. Um, on the internet by going to um, rockartshow.com rockartshow, one word rockartshow.com I, I wanted to ask since you've, uh, your art has been able to let you travel all over is there one place that you wanted to travel to interact with fans and you haven't got to yet? Yep and what is it? You're going to ask me what is it, right? Yes <laughs> Yeah, I want to go to Alaska the poor people in Alaska get miss out on everything. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so Fairbanks, Alaska would be great. The, the problem is, is that you've got such a long way to ship all the artwork, you know, and come back, you know. And one never knows if, if one would have a successful show there or not. But a lot of trouble to get to Alaska and back again. Huh. It, it might be worth the adventure. It would be fun, that's true. Uh, do you have any, I know you're retired now, but is there any projects that coming up that maybe somebody wants you to do some work with? Okay. No, no, I'm, uh, everybody I worked with, all my colleagues, um, all the, uh, all, all the people that I used to work with are in deep, deep retirement or alas, passed away already. Oh. And the young people, they work together as they should and they're doing their own thing. And they're doing wonderful cartoons with computers and uh frankly if i was a young guy now i wouldn't want to do animation because i don't want to sit in front of a computer but that's just a function of my age and my life you know uh, have you thought about going to any um schools and um teaching about how um, artwork and animation no, no i haven't actually um um uh, but there's nothing I can teach a young animator because that, that young animator is going to expect me to sit down, sitting down at a computer. And what can I teach him about that? You know, I can send emails. You know? <laughs> I can read the news. That's, you know, oh. surf the web, you know. But I have no clue how to animate on a computer. Oh, I don't either. I prefer to sketch. <laughs> right, I do too. Uh, whenever you're doing your sketches, do you have a certain um, pen, paper, pad that you prefer to use? Yes. Oh, yes. 
Yes, I've developed a... I, I never did do any painting in my career as an animator. I never touched anything more complex than a pencil. However, <clears throat> in my retirement, when I'm painting, I had to hearken back to the days when I was an art student in Melbourne at Swinburne. And I had to uh, relearn how to paint, but it was kind of a little bit like like they say about riding a bike, once you learn, you know, you know. And then it's a question of doing it and doing it and doing it. So um, when I look back on the paintings that I did when I first retired, I don't think they're, you know, quite as sharp or sophisticated as they are now. But still, um, uh, I liked them, and uh, I like what I'm doing now, and uh, the public apparently likes it very much too. I wanted to ask, when um, people go back and look at your legacy, at uh, the work you've created, what do you hope they learn from it? Uh, I, I, to, to tell you the truth, I think one of the main emotions that people have when they look at my work is nostalgia. Um, they remember the happy salad days of their childhood where there was a time uh, where there was a special moment set aside just for you young child and it was Saturday morning and 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 the kids looked forward to it and uh, I, I hope when they and I, I, I know um, that many people when they look at my artwork um, uh, it warms their little hearts and their memories of their childhood yeah. and that, that's why actually uh, one main piece that I paint from time to time I call childhood memories that's what it is, really. Uh, I wanted to ask, is there anything else that we need to cover for the interview that we missed? No, no. Um, just so long as um, just so long as you get the name of the art gallery that I'll be at and the address, that would be a very good thing. Um, uh, you, you, you asked astute questions, and uh, I hope my answers were adequate for your purposes. Um, oh, I was going to ask, I missed one thing. Um, people, oh, If people bring in items for you to sign, is there fees for that? No, I don't charge for that. Okay, I was let I put that yeah. in there. Yeah, no, no. I, uh, we're, we're, we're not little money grubbers here. We, we'll sell you a painting, and I do a painting on your certificate of authenticity as part of the deal. We'll sell you a painting, and the prices are all clearly marked, um, but uh, if I can do you a little favor or something, I have no problem with that. 